So, Sid, uh, what do you make of everything that just happened? Even though we can't see much from inside here? Uh, you have any ideas what happened with Omega? Did you just see that crap with Ida's tattoos just, just fading into non-existence? What the hell was up with that? Oh, hi, dude. Yeah, I think we should start ask, going around asking people what the hell just happened. Now you ever always wear the talkative one, so. Oh, hi everybody else. Yeah, did somebody think to bring a camera? Because we have no idea what the hell happened. Leave her be. Leave her be. Not like Eda's gonna be of any use in any of that, those kinds of meetings anyway, so... Well, not like what, what fucking happened! <laughs> Eat the crap out of some Imperial Legatus guy. I went in there, you guys did stuff, eat a press to switch, and the next thing you know, we're like, oh, this thing's not responding anymore. And that was about it. What you guys saw was probably about 50 times more interesting than what I saw, but from where I'm standing, it was kind of boring. Kind of nice not to be in the thick of the action for once. Just being the one sitting behind and be like, okay, I guess fill me in. Why do we always have our meetings here? Why don't we ever have them anywhere else? Now in this situation, I can kind of understand because it is the closest, you know, what with us being in Redania. But like every other meeting we've had with the Alliance has been in here. No, I actually didn't do anything for once. No, Emmerich, no, no, no. They were already on reach of mortal hands. Unfortunately, well, not that we, as were light, know this yet, but yeah, they, 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 they were gotten by immortal hands. Quite obviously. Y you made the right call there. I'm not placing blame on you at all. But I do like how they lampshade on that. Yeah, like I said, pretty fucking boring. Okay, then. So, let's go there. We'll find out. Alagon super weapon, somewhat up potentially on the loose here. Sleeping or not, somebody is going to find that. We better hope we find it before the Imperials do, because they might be able to re re reverse engineer that shit. Well, that's assuming the stasis systems worked. If it malfunctioned or was fatally wounded, those systems might not be intact. Well, at least I get a vote of confidence from Nero that they're not going to be able to figure it out, but... I'll just have to take your word on that, son.
Guys, it's been 20 years. It's not gonna be that easy. Even if we could just somehow kick the Imperials out. Yeah, entire generation has gone by with Alamegans under Imperial rule. It's not just gonna be hunky fucking dory. Even if we manage to succeed at this monumental task. Oh, will you shut up about that? Nobody's giving a shit about that anymore. Yeah, so would the rest of us. Okay. I want to check in on Ida too, so. We should do that. We should definitely do that. So how about someone, Germany draw us a picture of what happened? Maybe. Maybe. If only there were any sort of artist we knew. If only. Uh, hi, friends. Why are you not with the rest of everybody? Oh, okay. All right, let's go check on her then. Restio can freaking wait. I have a village idiot to confront and cuddle. Okay, all right, she still needs a moment, all right. All right, all right, we'll jump down. Thankfully, there's not any creepy multi-eyed creatures hanging around. Really? Where, where is the wall? I can't, it's too dark. Yeah, no, I guess you're right. Kind of hard to see, it is 1 a.m. in Eorzea right now. My friends, I cannot well express how glad I am to see you both unharmed. They say that Omega's clash with the Primal shook the very firmament. You need not have worried. The battle took place far above the ground. We were able to observe in relative safety, though I am given to understand that there were casualties on the far side of the wall. It was like watching a nightmare unfold before our very eyes. Ilbert's primal manifested in the form of a colossal dragon, a being of pure violence. It burst forth from the cocoon with such terrible force. That such a horror should spring from the eyes of Nidhogg comes as no surprise, nor do I wonder at its form. Ilbert all but announced it in the moments prior to his death. Plainly, it was his dying wish to visit a second calamity upon the Empire. And I am quite certain the Abomination would have obliged had it not found itself outmatched by a Mega. Gods! I am no stranger to the works of Alag, but even I was unprepared for the machine's furiosity. It beggared belief. And how fares poor Eda in the midst of all this? Have you spoken with her? Well, I tried and she's kind of catatonic right now, apparently. She is up on the platform, lost in thought. We deemed it best not to disturb her, but mayhap she would welcome some company after all. Shall we? Yes. She needs snuggles. Hell, we all need snuggles after all this. Group hug? The light's gone. It was all we had left of him. Ida. I don't blame anyone. I knew what was going to happen. 
I knew the spell Papali meant to cast would drain away his life force. I knew that it would only buy us a little time. Ida, there is no need to explain. But there is. I can't hide in Papalimo's little shadow anymore, and I shouldn't hide behind my sister's mask. Wait, what? Twenty years ago, on the day the Empire marched into Alamigo, I was still just a child, not even five summers old. My father had been one of the leaders of the revolution. He had fought to overthrow the mad king, Theodoric. And my sister had fought alongside him. But she was strong and kind, and always knew what to do. Oh, it looks like she's just gonna cry. But when the Garleans came, everything changed. My father went to war against them too. And I never saw him again. After that, I remember a lot of running. My sister dragged me for malms and malms until we came to the city of Charlian. That was where she met Master Louis Soir. He introduced her to the Circle of Knowing, and she eventually became an Archon. She was your inspiration. Is that not why you took up her mask and her name? Or did you simply mean to continue what she had started? Uh, yeah. Can you guys slow down? I have a ton of questions here. You've known all along, haven't you? That I wasn't Ida. Uh, wait, what? Of course. We all recognized you at once. It was Papalimo who persuaded us to maintain the charade. I'm sorry, what? What? Thought I was trusted a member of the Scions over here. What the fuck, guys? It was silly to think I could fool you. I knew that even then, but I... I sort of... decided not to know. Ida died six years ago on a mission to smuggle refugees out of Alamigo. They say she was overwhelmed by Imperial soldiers when she stayed behind to save a little girl. She was so strong. There must have been a lot of them. Yeah, that. I'm sorry for lying to you. My real name is Lise. Oh, it's not just you who lied to me, it was everybody else, too. When Papalimo brought me Ida's mask, it was meant as a keepsake, but... I decided I wanted to be his new partner. To keep alive all the good that she had done. Okay. Well, in spirit, I at least understand that. I didn't want to become Ida, exactly. At the time, though, I still didn't know who I was myself. And it almost seemed easier to play the role. Papalimo agreed to help, of course, but it was never what he wanted for me. He wanted me to walk my own path. And those were his final words to me. But, 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 he, he's the one who told everybody to keep up the charade and pretend you were actually Ida. The fuck? The Archon's mark he gave me is faded, and my last excuse along with it. Yeah, why did he have the magic that on? Couldn't he just draw on the magic marker? So this is it. Whatever I choose to do from now on, I do as lease. And I choose to continue my family's fight. I want Alamigo to be the country that Ida and my father always wanted it to be.
Well, this explains quite a bit, including why, you know, she's kind of been village idiot this whole time. War is upon us once more. Do you regret standing against the Empire? Would you have chosen a different road, knowing what you know now? To claim that I never doubted the decision would be a lie. But I made my choice, and I have defended it with blade in hand ever since. The battle continues, and our steel is needed. Come, Shadow Walker. We leave for the east, for Doma. Um, 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 yeah, paid hospitality, all that stuff. Empire Lodge, uh, about to walk on ARZ's doorstep, like, right meow. Uh, hi, guys, uh, your help will be very handy. Sure you guys, you guys want some revenge? Them burning down your whole land and all that shit? No? No, okay, fine. Yeah, Shorty Pants, what the hell do you have to say about all this? Yeah, is this like a trend among them that like once they get a piece of headgear that like covers half their face, they like never ever take it off and let people see what they actually look like? Because that, that would probably explain Oriange too. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're skipping the credits. Um, all I have to say about that is, where the hell did all that come from? Now, that quest marker is just gonna wait a moment. Wait a moment long until I finish my thought here. Obviously, Regardless of what her name is, Ida, Elise, whatever the hell you want to call her, she's still our friend, okay? And I'm still willing to stand and support her because nothing really about her has changed, okay? She's, she's still the same lovable idiot that we all know. But one thing I don't understand, and I would like to say that today is June 14th, okay? Stormblood has not yet come out. Early access starts in, like, less than 48 hours. So by the time you see this episode... Some of my questions here may already have been long since answered, okay? So, please forgive if anything, for those of you who actively play the game, doesn't make sense because you already know future information that past me does not yet know. But, this scene kind of baffled me because while I completely understand Lise wanting to take her sister's mask and take up her sister's mantle, not only as Pabaluma's partner, but to continue all the good work she was doing, especially in the face of not really knowing what she wanted to do herself, I can completely understand that. However, what the fuck is up with her quite literally not only stealing her sister's name, stealing her sister's mark, but everyone around him getting, getting everyone around, around them to lie about it and pretend she is someone she isn't. What the hell? And it wasn't even at her insistence either. Like, at least then I could get, you know, just, just in her grief and her, her own unresolved that it, it was just basically all she could do to, to find a purpose to, to keep going on and to relive her sister's memory or anything like that. But no, it's Papa Limo who convinces the rest of the damn circle of knowing to keep up this fucking charade. Why? Like, I don't get it. Like, what possible reason is there? That's like one hell of a lie to hold up for six damn years. It's no wonder poor Lisa's is kind of really kind of fucked up right now. Because at this point she can't hide it anymore. And, at the, and also like, well who the hell is she now? Like she hasn't lived for herself in the past six years. Like oh my god I feel terrible for her. But... Despite that little rant, this does explain what we saw at the last patch with that, that, that guy who... Whatever his name is that is in charge of, like, little Alamigo over there. 
the the confusion in that scene here because he thought she was the real Ida. That's hence why, oh, you know, you haven't aged a day since the last time I saw you. Whatever. Yeah. So... I mean, her face has been covered, but apparently at least, at least bears somewhat of a resemblance to her sister. I mean, I, I guess she would have to because she's been passing herself off for several years as such, but... Like, why would Papa Limo go through such lengths to do that? Like, I have several minor theories in my head, but I'm not going to get into that now. Especially because, as I said, by the time you guys see this episode, those questions may have long have been since answered in Stormblood. So I don't want to make myself look like a total idiot. So, hey homie, what's up? Oh, oh, yeah, I, we should totally do that. Totally do that. Okay, no, no, you need to put the weapons down and retire already, okay? Play some card games. We're not going to hold it against you. All right? All right, maybe there's something else we can find you to do around here, okay? All right. Oh, my God, it's real! Hi! Wasn't I just bitching about your non-presence a couple episodes ago? See, see, not only have you guys been lying to me, you have been guys have been lying to Tataru the whole time, too. Okay? Alright, I will not stand for that. Okay? I may be a somewhat newbie in comparison to her to the Silence of the Seventh Dawn. But, yeah. Lying to me is one thing. On the Warrior of Light, like, by, by this point, I, I, I might as well just be some kind of trophy to you guys with the way you guys treat me and everything. But Tataru, no, no, no. No, no. I'm not gonna stand for that bullshit. And indeed, she is up. She's up in Rowena's bar. I'm not going to go all the way up there and talk to her, but that is indeed where she is. Yeah, well, Hori found another squats partner. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are getting along. Again. Still. Really? Really? Ah! Damn it, man! Now, obviously, I understand why they couldn't do that, but at least they could come here and when I talk to her, you know, just have like a, you know, like do a Gilligan cut or something here. Yeah, I want to punch a lot of people right now. Damn, I would have thought this place would have been nuked to the ground in the fight. Apparently not. Yeah, except for the time I totally ping-ponged your ass at the Grand Malay. Still feel a little bit bad about that, even if it was hilarious.
Oh, don't you have any words for that bastard? Don't, don't, don't you even, Raban. No, no, don't you even. He does not deserve any of it at this point. He might have been your friend at one time, but no, no, no. He clearly went completely off his meds. hair. Uh, okay, but he didn't... They, nothing was said. Well, okay then. So, my friends, that is the end of Heaven's Ward. At last. Took us 70 episodes to get here, but we are here. Of course, we have several special episodes coming immediately after this. As I just get everyone else's extra dialogue. Which I have my own things to say about and whatnot. They are they're very lengthy, so they're gonna be chopped up into a crap load of pieces. But I hope you guys look forward to all that regardless. And I'd like to thank everybody who stuck around with me for the whole thing, despite my random bitching about certain things. As I said in the intro, I, I do genuinely love this game. Even though there are some things that are flawed, and yes, some of the things I am angry and bitching about, yes, I am purposely playing it up. And there's a lot of factors that, that go into things in the writing, so some of the things I can forgive, even if I, you know, completely just screamed into the microphone about. I wouldn't be playing th this game still if I had that much problem with it, and I hated it that much. I'm not doing the main story here on my Let's Play channel. Just for the sake of, oh yeah, here's how you walk yourself through the fights, even if I've done that from time to time in this. It's because I actually wanted to talk about the story. And I wouldn't do that if I didn't genuinely love it as a whole. I wouldn't be playing this game after nearly four years and sticking around with it the whole time if I did not love. And of course, if you can't riff on what you love, then did you genuinely love it in the first place, I would say. So once again, everybody, thank you very much for sticking around with me. I hope you have enjoyed. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments you have about anything you want my opinion on regarding any of the story or character development or anything. I'm always very happy to talk about these kinds of things, even if I get ranty and kind of crack whore-ish about random stuff I make up. But nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed. And one day, one day, I will see you all in Stormblood. <laughs>